Happy Hero with Done by Dorothy. We are so excited to have you with us this morning. Um, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Any links for anything will be in the description box below. Um, links to the Mirabella set that we're doing. We are still working on our Mirabella Nature Journal. Um, although we're getting really close to the end of it, we've got some stuff, you know, more stuff we're doing. But overall, getting really close. So, without further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to do faux postage stamps. Um, and again, you know, these are pretty simple. I really enjoy making them. I have a blast making them. So, hopefully you will too. So, first thing I'm going to do is... <clears throat> and excuse me, I do have a cold, so I have a, just, this is a piece of this scrap tea dyed paper that I have, and that's just what I'm going to use as my background because it's a scrap. Okay, and I've got my scissors ready, although I got glue stuff on. Okay, and I have a piece, this is our tissue paper we made. Uh, this was the one that I printed on the text. Um, gift tissue from Hobby Lobby that I had gotten and so we have lots of little pictures that are printed on here so I'm just going to randomly cut some of these out um, you know sort of keep it in mind about the size of a postage stamp so I'm just going to do a small square sort of cut them out in small squares they don't have to be exact because you know we can go back and change that later let's see there's nothing there that I really need so let me and remember that they don't have to be a certain size so yeah you, know, you can do them in different sizes and that way you have a really nice assortment of I'm gonna cut this up here and cut my little snake out and I'm just maybe do this one a little bit longer and since it has this snake on it just trim it up a little bit Okay, let's see. We could just do this in general. Just sort of do the little cherries and the flowers. Okay, so these I'm just going to count as scraps, and we can use those to modge podge anything in. Let's see, here's my little frog. I can use it. And I think we'll. Oh, I do have this one really pretty little flower over here I'll, I'll grab. almost like a little um, pansy so let me so yeah I'm just gonna cut out the individual little images and when I created this exact this page I kept sort of kept that in mind so there is some spacing between so we can use this just for random layering up you know putting behind design so <clears throat> again excuse me let me grab a drink of my tea and I'll be right back. My hot tea to sort of help your throat loosen up. So, okay. So we have this. So we have our little squares. I'm just going to set them up here out of the way. And then I'm going to grab my... using our Mod Podge. I'm going to be using my DIY Mod Podge. So I will make sure that I link it in the video um, in the description box below. And this is pretty easy. There's not a lot to this. Um, it probably seems a little bit harder than what it is. But it actually isn't that hard. So, And again, we have our Mod Podge video on how to make this. It's super simple. So, Okay, so I'm just going to Mod Podge my page, and then I'm going to remember when I lay my squares down, and I'm gonna when I do that, I'm just gonna Mod Podge over top of them. You need to remember one thing: you need to keep enough space in between them so we can, you know, give it that really cute little like pinking sheer postal you know, stamp looking edge. I'm actually using pinking shears on my edging. Um, I I have to get in my, I'll pause the video in a little bit when I get ready cut out. I do have, um, I think I have, I'm pretty sure I have some scissors that have like 
a true postal stamp edge. Um, although the ones I have are quite old. I've had them for, oh my lord. Ugh. I, I would say 12. Oh, uh, well, my, my youngest daughter was a toddler when I really got into scrapbook, scrapbooking. And she just turned 14, so yeah, uh, probably, you know, 12, 13 years. So we're just going to mod podge this down. I will have to pause and let this dry. Um, you can use, a, you know, like a blow dryer or a heating tool, you know, to dry this. I don't like to um, because I think it causes it to sort of curl and become sort of wobbly, I guess is the word I want to use. Oh, that's probably not the word to use, but it sort of wrinkles it and makes it, you know, get all goofy. And it doesn't take a lot, and then you're just going to stick them down. I promise you guys, when we get done doing this, and then um, this will probably be a two-part because we will have it's going to depend on timing. Um, we will have the faux postage stamps that we're doing now. Then we're actually going to do um, DIY postcards. Um, so that we're going to use our our stamps on. So it'll be really cute. So we'll have uh, you know several postcards that we can use. If I can get my lid back on my glue. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pause this, let this dry, grab my fancy scissors, and um, I will be back as soon as we can get that done. Okay, guys, Dorothy, and we are back again. We got our um, little squares dried, nice and dried. So that's what they look like. So they came out really nice. So I'm just going to take my scissors and these are just my straight scissors and I'm just going to cut out my little squares now technically on this step you could have put I could have put them a little closer together I like leaving them you know a distance apart because I think it's easier for the drying process to work correctly and I did use um, the DIY Modge Podge, so it is a matte. Modge Podge, it's not a gel, or a, a gloss. And this, this was the, just a cut off piece. It was a scrap piece of the tissue paper again that we made. If, if, you know, I know I did the little collage paper um, to use. If that is something you would like to see, like in the future when I do kits and things to include a, collage sheet like that to use for tissue paper you know let me know in the comments you know because that's you know one of those things that it takes a little bit of time putting it together but you know I if people aren't interested in it obviously I don't want to you know waste the time doing it although I have really enjoyed having it this time because I've we did quite a few little things with it and so I will show you in a minute when I get this cut out um, some samples of the faux postage stamps that I've did already and I really enjoyed you know doing these and the thing of it is is you could print out a page of that um, you know as you're printing just you know print out an entire page just to use for stamps and you could make a batch of stamps up you know throw them in a baggie when you get done or you know whatever you want to put them in an envelope or whatever your storage system is and you could have them made up they're naturey they don't necessarily have to go with this so you could use them in um, racks you could use them in swaps as decorations I mean it's nature so and it's a stamp so it doesn't really have to match um, you know you sort of have any kind of naturey theme then you can make it work because you know even though it doesn't match it's a stamp so 
I mean, how often do we get envelopes and you get, you know, cards inside? They don't necessarily match the stamps. So, okay, so here is two of our faux postage stamps. This one is a butterfly, and you can see we already have the canceled out part on there, too. If you can see that, hopefully you can see it. But... And then this one I absolutely love. It's a mushroom. So, I mean, you know, they're nice little hefty. And because we use that Mod Podge, yeah, they're pretty tough. They're pretty thick. So, I mean, you could use them on the outside of journals. You could use them for, you know, countless other things. So, we do do two or three layers. Um, now, when I just cut did this, and Mod Podge, and I should have kept one to show you. Um, well, anyway, when we Mod Podged, and this was on here, I could have went in um, with my scissors. And I could have... down so it's a little bit more complicated I'm sure to hold it in. okay anyway I could have went in and just trimmed the actual paper around it I actually like doing the double layer I'll go ahead and do this one but um I actually like doing the double layer because I think it gives it a little bit more strength I mean I know you're gonna glue it onto something so it probably doesn't really matter but uh, that's just me I like it having that little so I'm gonna ink up around the edges of each of my little squares and you don't have to do that um, and I need to find I just had it so I would well I'm gonna find it because I'm looking for it because that's just the way life works I just had it out so I could See, maybe it's in my pile here. No, but I can use the walnut stain. You may want to use, like, I have walnut stain. I have a little black one that I just had pulled up. Oh, there it is. I know I pulled it out and put it to the side so I would have it. It is uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink. It's one of the small, the minis. Um, it's black soot. I have large, but I think, I don't know, the little ones I, you can just take it and sort of, go around the edge it doesn't really it just sort of I don't know I think it gives it like an extra darker edge where it looks more a little more 3d like it's more I don't know I'll show you a I'll put it on and I'll show you in a minute when I have a stamp set, and it's not even a postal stamp. I mean, you can get ones that are postal. I don't even. Let me try to center this up here. Which, again, is another easy thing if you've done it ahead of time. Okay, but I'll show you the difference in a minute. Let me. So, I mean, it's sort of up to you and what your preference is. I always make sure I ink the edges. Um, sort of dark with this just because I like the edges to stand out I mean to me that's that's the thing that makes it really have that postage stamp look okay so here is let me put them side by side and see if that helps me this one I use the black soot around and you can tell the out the outward edge has that like darkness that almost gives it like another dimension where this one I stained around the outside with um, the distress the vintage photo and I mean it does add a little different element but the black almost makes it pop more so I started doing the black on the outside edges because I thought that was looked a little cuter so yeah, so I mean, you can do it, you know, if you had had this Mod Podge on here, you could just cut it around if you want to save yourself, you know, that step. I, like I said, 
I'm gonna do this one token. I like that, you know, extra layer in there. And I like taking the black around because, you know, there's like some of the edges, you know, it may catch a little bit. And it sort of gives it that look like it's been ran through, you know, the mail, you know, through the machines at the post office when they cancel them out. So it just sort of depends on how much, how much, um, what is the word I'm looking for? How much detail, you know, you want to put into it, how much time you want to take. It doesn't take that long and doing this takes just about as long as running my distress ink around it and I mean you don't even have to do that I mean you could not do that too I mean you're not really gonna hurt it any I am I do have these are this I mean they, they these come in all different kinds and they're just a little gooey you know decorated edge scissors you can use those I like the pinking shears because I don't know they remind me more of like an older type stamp so I always just use my pinking shears. That's my personal preference. So to each his own, if you would rather use that. And then I'm just going to glue these. And I always just make sure that I get a good coverage of glue because I want to make sure that I have them, you know, cured. I don't want them to seem like they're, I mean, I don't really want to use, I want to use a page to set. Well, I wanted to use a page that had a bit more stain to it. So one of these darker pages that, remember the ones that came out and I didn't want to really use in my journal because they were really dark? These are perfect for this because I like stuff, I like it to have that darker look to it. Like it's, so then I'm just going to glue these on. Make sure I'm in camera, are you in camera? Yeah. I have the tendency to work really close to myself and sometimes that doesn't work well with the camera, so. <clears throat> okay I'm gonna pause real fast and you may notice a little bit of a difference because my camera went crazy so we do have our lemon down and we're going back to finishing glueing up everything so sorry I had to pause that there for a minute and fix the issue so I'm just gonna glue this you know leaving enough room that I can trim between them I don't want them butted up against each other. I want to make sure I have enough room that I can, you know, get in there and cut around them. But yeah, when, you know, you are Mod Podge or whatever, if you Mod Podge them on a different piece of paper, it does give you sort of another layer in there so it doesn't look so much like it's not just a flat appearance. And I sort of like the raised layer, so that's just something that I always do. But that is a step that you are not, re you don't have to do. So, you know, if you're, you know, low on coffee stained paper, you can use regular white typing paper, you can use anything. Um, and ink around the edges it just sort of gives it that little added so I'm gonna turn this page out move this to the side okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go down this edge and I just leave about I would say roughly oh somewhere between a quarter and an eighth that's not quite an eighth but it's not quite a quarter so sort of in between and I just sort of trim along and this is one of those things if it's not completely straight you don't have to stress about it um, once you get it inked and everything else you're not really gonna be able to tell a whole lot so I am gonna go ahead and let's see let's go ahead and do it up. and see where I put those close I can just go right down between and you know you can trim them up if they're if you don't feel like there is even as you want them to be around the outside edges or whatever, you know. It all depends on your spacing and how far you want it to be. Let's 
I'm gonna just keep trimming these up. That little frog is so cute. I have really enjoyed the frogs in this kit, and I'm not, you know, this sort of sounds funny, I guess, but some of the little creatures in this kit are just too cute. And I mean, it doesn't take a whole long, it, it takes longer, <laughs> it takes longer going through explaining exactly how to do it than it does if, you know, I'm just doing it. And, you know, all those little scraps you can put in your scrap box and keep for later if you want. Okay, so, have this now, I'm just going to ink my sponge up. I'm going to ink the edges. And I'm, again, using Tim Holtz Vintage Photo of the Distress Ink. I love you some. And, and, I mean, you don't have to add the Distress Ink. You can do that in, you know, if you have a certain color, you know, say... You know, I have, um, there's a lot of green in this nature kit. So, you know, I could do green or if, you know, uh, you literally could do any color. I really like the nature things because, you know, you could make a whole batch of these ahead of time. And literally, you know, if you're doing a yellow journal, yeah, this is a lemon. But if you're doing, I have it upside down. Um, you know, if you're doing any kind of journal that has yellow in it, you can pull that lemon in and make it work, even if it's not a nature journal, because it's a stamp, and as we all know, you can put any kind of stamp on any kind of envelope, so. And so you put them on outside envelopes, you can use them just as embellishments, um, you know, in the corner of a page, just to add a little pop. You know, you could use them on postcards, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do them, so. I would suggest, like, if, you know, if I know, I'm going to trim this up a little bit more. I don't like how uneven that is over there. Um, I know, you know, these are nature so they're going to blend with a lot of things. So, you know, I may do two or three pages of them, you know, and I'll have 30 stamps ahead of time. I don't ever have, you know, for quite a while. You know, I'll have stamps. So I'm going to put these on this page because it's white. So I think it'll help them stand out a little better so you can see them maybe. I love that little pansy one. And the little frog one's cute. Oh, let me go back to the other one that I did, the little snail. Yeah, darken that size up, I think, a little bit more. Sometimes it seems like you get a... You can really tell a difference in the paper, and I'll show you. Okay, so this was a lighter paper that I used, where this was, you know, the darker, you know, this dark, you know, there's the difference in the colors of the paper. So you can tell how light this is to how dark this is. It will make a difference in how your stamps look. So I'll hold these up so you can see. And the five at the top, they're going to keep moving around. Um, we're done with the darker paper. Where, you know, the bottom was done with that lighter paper. And you can really tell a difference. So, but that does that. So, let's pile these up over here. Because we're going to do these one by one. And I have a stamp. And I just got this. It was in a generic set. It's like a no-name, literally, like a dollar store no-name type thing. But it has, let's see if I can, let me use my. I want to use my black and not my brown because I think the black does a little bit. I'm not going to super ink it. I'm just going to lightly ink it. Let me see if I can stamp it so you can see. It's just like a compass and then little squiggly lines. They're not even, they're two different separate stamps, but I just put them together because they sort of look like that whole canceled postage look. So. So I'm just going to lightly tap my ink on there. It doesn't even have to be, this is one of those where it's really nice because you don't have to worry about the stamp coming through perfect. If it, you know, you only get a part of it, then, you know, then that's fine. And I'm just going to sort of try to do like if I was canceling it out at the post office. So see, it just has that canceled stamp look. And, you know, you don't really don't have to worry about making sure you get, ew. Do 
keep rubbing that all over my arm over my hand um let's see i don't want to cover up his little face so i'll do it this way and you know you can get as much as around us or so it just sort of create, creates that it literally looks like a faux postage stamp or like but this one will be nice because you'll be able to get almost all of it if i can scoot it on here and even it out So see, there you go. It really does look like a canceled stamp. So, you know, once you do this a couple times, um, you sort of get in the hang of it. And once you do, you can fly through these. So, I mean, making like 30 or 40 of these is nothing. You know, you just take four or five sheets and just one after another makes it so nice okay so let me... so I just keep this on this block this is my and when I'm doing my stamps then I already have it and it's right there so let me just wipe this up and put this on here and I'll put my stamps back on here so we can show you again these are the ones that and oh I missed one so I missed this one I will use the vintage photo um, ink so you can sort of see what the difference is coloring wise um, on at least the canceled part because it does give it a different look it is lighter so I mean you do get more of the picture and it looks okay I personally like the black because I think it looks more true to the to like you know the post office so I will put these on here so let me hold it up see you can see those and this is the one with the vintage photo so you can see how light that cancellation is compared to like this one so you know it does come through and you see more of the picture if that's what you're worried about i'm not so much worried about seeing the picture as seeing you know the cancellation creating that more realistic look of a stamp so that is our faux postage stamp so you know in that little bit of time we did um two four six i think two of these were already two of these were already done so we did six so i mean and that was with me stopping and camera issues and everything else. So you can see how, you know, fast you can get going once you do it. So now that we have all these extra stamps in our arsenal, we are going to move on to, that one wasn't even inked up. We're going to move on um, into the next video. Uh, the next video we will be doing, we will be using the stamps. So, you know, it'll be something really fun, I promise. Um, so we will see you next time again, like, comment, subscribe, um, you know, share with your friends. Uh, I think we're at 720 some odd subs at this point. Um, this is January. So, you know, I'd really, really, really love to get to a thousand sometimes like before March, you know, February, March. So share with your friends. Um. That type of thing. We will be back. We will be back with the next video. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.